Hello friends, has sensitive skin but an even more sensitive ego here bringing you another Dota 2 video on behalf of Dota Alchemy where I'm going to be breaking down what I think the hero tier list is for uh, offlaners. The, the power tier list I should say because they're not just organized randomly. These are the heroes that I think are broken and they're going to win you some MMR. So take this with a grain of salt. The patch was just released and this is just my opinion. So I very well could be wrong and I definitely am wrong. A lot of things need to develop. We need to see tournaments. We need to see pubs. But this is what I have so far. First recommendation is even if you think that this video is stupid and you want to click away from it, uh, I would highly recommend to uh, set up your hero pick screen to be something other than the defaults. I feel like my win rate has gone up by like 2% over a large sample size of games after switching it to this, uh, not necessarily because having hero tiers is a good concept. I think it is, maybe you don't, but having a structure to follow for picking means that I don't pick dumb shit anymore. And I would highly recommend for you to not pick dumb shit anymore by virtue of uh, setting this up. But in any case, so we have the S tier category of hero and that is Sand King and Sand King alone. Uh, possibly other few heroes fall into this category. I'm just not 100% sure yet, but I know Sand King is S tier. And the reasoning behind this is he was already A or S tier in the previous patch, and the heroes that were above him, such as Enchantress, these heroes got nerfed. So they've fallen down the list, Sand King rises up. And then with that being said, Sand King has always been an incredibly good hero, basically because Sandstorm is an incredibly good ability. And where people would punish Sand King is not once he has levels, everybody knows that he's good when he has levels, it's when he was level 1 to 3. You try to get the hero to feed and then he'd fall off and be bad. Uh, now, the carries that people are picking are terrible against Sand King. You're laning against some useless like Faceless Void or Troll, Troll Warlord, some hero that just doesn't pressure you at all in the first 1 to 3 levels, and then you're level 3, and then when they can pressure you, you're Sand King with levels, so you can pressure them as well. So that's, that's kind of why this hero is amazing right now. The meta has swung where it feels very good. Universe is spamming this hero. I would highly recommend checking out his games if you're interested in learning. Actually, I'm releasing a Sand King guide in a couple of days now, so check that out as well. Uh, a tier, we have Axe, Abaddon, Nightstalker, and Pudge. With Axe, basically I thought he was S tier in the previous patch, but now with the double stout shield nerf and people getting better at dealing with the creep cutting shenanigans, he's fallen to A tier, but he's still an amazing hero. Abaddon, he's been getting buffed for quite a few patches. The ability to deny in the offlane while also having two of the best trading abilities in Dota in the Curse of Avernus and uh, Aphotic Shield is very annoying to deal with, very cancer. Uh, he's been getting buffed in his movement speed and Curse of Avernus has been getting buffed, so this hero has essentially just hit this apex where he's very strong. Nightstalker, with the Aghanim's change and then allowing Void to uh, work in the daytime where it doesn't do half damage. This hero got this ability to farm. Uh, he got this ability to uh, contribute in team fights. And then on top of that, people have gotten a lot better at playing around the crippling fear ability, building blink dagger, jumping on back lines. Uh, people have gotten a lot better at playing around the dark ascension, using it in team fights to find crucial heroes and then jump back lines. I mean, think about it. If this hero builds a blink dagger, he's the perfect back line jumper. And then he gives himself the vision with dark ascension to jump the back lines. So essentially, this hero, people are just playing it better, as well as this buff to the daytime void uh, has made this hero an A-tier uh, offlaner. Pudge. This is another A-tier hero, and the reason for this is very similar to Sand King, where a lot of the heroes that were better than him have fallen down the list, and not very many things that people used to pick to pressure Pudge are good anymore. Ursa used to be the main hero that people would pick to just shit on Pudge in the laning stage, and it wasn't even picked at TI9. It was a complete dog hero. Everybody ignored it. B tier. So in the B tier, we have heroes that are incredibly strong, but only if you get them in games where you're countering something or you have something on your team. And we'll start with the easy one, the easy ones first. So Batrider, uh, this hero is amazing against Monkey King, Sven, Terrorblade, any of these heroes that you can just shit on with your Q and your E in the laning phase. Uh, Omni Knight, an amazing hero, but only good if you have some hero to buff, such as a Troll, such as an Outworld Devourer, such as a Sven. Uh, Tidehunter, only good if you really want to team fight the enemy team and group up and death ball. Uh, Tiny, this hero has just fallen down the list from A or S tier because of the nerfs to the Aghanim Scepter, which were an amazing late game uh, tool that you could use to just win fights. But with that being said, uh, Tiny as an offlaner 
doesn't care as much about the damage from Aghanim Scepter, just like the Echo Saber. You go for Blink, and you go for possibly Four Staff, so it's it's not a huge hit to the offlane Tiny, and that's why he's in the B tier still. Uh, Beastmaster, this hero could possibly be A or S tier. This is one of those heroes that were the only reason I put it in B tier is because I see that it has a very high win rate. The sample size is kind of small. It felt pretty good in the previous patch, but it's also one of those heroes that if it falls behind, it can feel very bad. And if it gets ahead, it can snowball incredibly hard. Venomancer. This hero is incredibly good as well. Does a shitload of damage, outlanes a lot of things that you would think that maybe it wouldn't, like such as a life stealer. You can pick it uh, against any of these kind of melee carries and just absolutely dump on them. But you need to be careful about not getting tri laned and not playing against lanes that will just kill you. He is a damage over time trading hero. So if you pick it in a scenario where that's not what you're doing, it could feel really bad. Puck. Puck hasn't been getting buffed for a while. Uh, this hero is incredibly good against, you know, Clockworks, Tuscars, these uh, roaming supports, or even like position 5 supports that uh, they like block you off or they don't have any sort of hard disable. You can really punish a draft that has no hard disable by picking a Puck. Uh, also, if you want a hero to just burst important supports such as like Rubik or Oracle, then Puck or Tiny are really good for you because these are these are squishy hero killers. Pudge as well. I mean, honestly, all the all the S and A tier heroes are good at killing squishy supports just because they're broken heroes. C tier, we have Slardar. Uh, the reason Slardar is not B, A, or S tier is because uh, there are a lot of heroes that deal quite well with him in the laning stage, such as uh, Terror Blade, such as uh, Troll Warlord that people are picking right now. Magnus, only really good with like a PA or a Juggernaut. Centaur, been nerfed a lot, fell off a lot when the Double Stout Shield got nerfed. He also got some other nerfs on top of that. Mirana, possibly the best hero in Dota, and that's why she's in the C tier category, just because she's so good that if you want her, if you if you can get a Mirana, you should get a Mirana, even if it's in the offlane, but you'd prefer it to be a support. Earthshaker, very similarly, you'd kind of prefer it to be a support. The only reason I could see that you would uh, go for uh, an offlane Earthshaker is if you think the Agnum Scepter is really good, or you have some hero on the enemy team that you really want the Earthshaker to do well and, and deal with, like a Meepo or a Phantom Lancer. Legion Commander, very similar if you want to deal with like these illusion or like mass unit heroes. She's amazing. Uh, she can get very punished by a lot of heroes in the laning stage, such as Monkey King, uh, such as Ursa. Not a good hero, so that's possibly why she's climbing up the list. But uh, you, you, you do need to look out. She's also just very good if you need some sort of like hard BKB piercing disable. Bristleback, amazing hero, but you'd probably prefer it to be some sort of carry position where you can like snowball around him, but still a really good hero. Uh, Lashrak, similarly, good hero, but you'd kind of prefer it to be your mid laner because it can tempo control and get more uh, get more levels. But if you really want a hero to push towers and you completely lack that, then picking Lashrak in the offlane will give you a little bit of that offlane utility, but also give you the ability to push towers and give you the damage. Enchantress, was S tier last patch, got the nerf bat, has fallen to C tier. Simple, simple as that. Uh, Mars wasn't picked up that much at TI9. Very good against like Broodmother, against any of these heroes that are really quick and can't get through your your ultimate. But um, honestly, Mars has been getting nerfed a lot, so he's just kind of fallen off because his numbers aren't that great. Clinks. I think Clinks is an underrated hero. I think Clinks is broken. I think he has a place in the offlane, but I'm not 100% sure where he fits. If you're feeling spicy, then I would definitely recommend trying it out. Enigma, Darkseer, Nature's Prophet. The rest of these heroes are essentially, I don't think that they're completely unpickable, uh, but I think that you would probably prefer to get one of these other heroes first. If, if you can find some sort of scenario where you want to pick one of these heroes, it's quite possible you could just get a better hero that does relatively the same thing. So for, with that being said, there are very few scenarios. Like let's say you have a Spirit Breaker on your team and you know the guy's a really good Spirit Breaker player. Maybe you want to pick Darkseer to empower them. But with that being said, if you want some hero that like does really well in the laning stage, that's like a team fighter, you know, maybe you want Tidehunter. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I know this one was kind of uh, long and ranty and just staring at the hero pick screen, but uh, quite a few people were asking for this, so I figured that I would make it and, you know, just, just see how it goes. If you have any ideas for, like, you know, relatively simple improvements on something like this, then uh, I I'm all ears. I would love I would love to hear it in, in the comments below, but um, with that being said, thanks for watching, love you all, and uh, hope to see you in another video.